So now it's, it's Friday night. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Armatha. <laughs> if I got that wrong, I apologize to everybody from Armatha. Uh, his name was, was Joseph, uh, who had himself become a, a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked if for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out from the rock. He rolled the stone away from the entrance to the tomb, and he rolled a stone in front of the entrance to the tomb, and the other Mary Magdalene, Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. Uh, important to point out, the other Mary is Mary is Jesus's mother. Uh, so you know that's uh, they they at that point they had quit referring to her as Jesus's mother because he had uh, asked Peter uh, to become her son and her to take. To basically for Peter to take care of his mother now that he was gone uh, while he was on the cross. There's one of the seven uh, things that he did while he was was, was dying. Uh, the next day, this is Saturday, one of the prepar- uh, one the one after preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples will come and steal the body and tell the people that, they, that, he, has, that he has been risen from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Now, it's kind of funny. This is the the writings of the old, uh, it says guard. Well, in the next verse, it will be saying guards. It is projected that there was as many as six to 12 guards posted at that <laughs> tomb. Uh, keep in mind that these are uh, temple guards. These are not your regular runner to mill private, go stand in front of there and don't let nobody steal the body. These are temple guards. These are hardened, battle-worthy guards who have seen battle, who had been in battle. These are the, the SEAL Team 6 of their time. They were tough. These were, these, these were some bad boys, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, so after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the temp- to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Now this stone took <laughs> five to seven men to roll in place. And this angel flicked it out of the way and hopped up on top of it. <laughs> so keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow, the guards were afraid of him, and they shook and became like dead men. They were absolutely frozen from the terror of looking at this cat. <laughs> now, all through the Bible, when an angel appears, most of the time, the first thing they say is, fear not or don't be afraid. I don't think he said that. <laughs> I think he said, be afraid, be very afraid. So, so, but, you know, I myself would have, my flesh is saying, man, I'd have loved to have seen that. 
But my spirit says, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did not want to see that. I can only imagine. Somebody ought to write a song. <laughs> but yes, uh, this, this is, uh, I, maybe I'm, I'm being a little giddy, a little silly, but at the same time, this is showing just how great and mighty our God is. And how he could have so easily saved Jesus from the cross if it wasn't for the fact that he had a bigger destination for him and for us and a path for us. And praise God, he let it happen, although he could have easily stopped it. All right, the angel, uh, <laughs> the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Oh, yeah, now he's got it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and it doesn't say that the guards had left yet, so he may have been saying, don't be afraid, and he looked over at the guards and said, mm -hmm, no, no, you be very afraid. All right. All right. So the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for, for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. When you go, then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. I'm sure they were in absolute disbelief. And in the other gospels, they talk about how uh, they had feared that somebody had stolen him, stolen him. And they actually cried out to the angel and said, <laughs> You know, we're, what have you done with our master? Uh, we're, we're only here to, to, you know, put oil and spices on him so that when he decays, he won't stink. So, uh, but yes, they were probably very, very uh, upset at the time. Uh, it says, so, so, they, so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. Yes, afraid and filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them, Greetings, he said. They came to him, collapsed at his feet, worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not go. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There I will meet them. All right. Guard report. While the women were on their way, some of the, the guards went to the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and deceived a plan, devised the plan, I think deceived was a better word there, devised the plan, <laughs> they, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while you were asleep. Gee, anybody ever heard of the government trying to cover up facts? And <laughs> Gee, it's been around a while. I don't think it's got any better, but that's another story. All right. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. That line is probably uh, the biggest part of this deception uh, that you can have. If a guard fell asleep on duty, especially during those times, they were murdered. They were killed. They were, they were, that was the price for falling asleep during. So for them to say that, especially six to 12 of them, oh yeah, we fell asleep. In the, how unbelievable is it? But in, in any case, so yes. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed and this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. So yes, there are still those that say that's what happened. The absolute facts there don't back up the story. So uh, also keep in mind that over 500 people saw Jesus die on the cross and then saw him again after he raised from the dead. So we got 500 witnesses. They got a few guards lying. So let's, let's go for that. All right. When, when the 11, 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, they saw him, they worshiped him, 
but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Has been given to me. Therefore, go and tell the, uh, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The other gospels go into a lot more details of what Jesus did after he rose. I chose this one because I like the guard report. I thought that was pretty cool how they, these tough bullies were, <laughs> were frozen. <laughs> All right. Uh, but the, the bottom line is that last thing Jesus said before he left this earth to bring on our Holy Spirit, to allow our Holy Spirit to come and, and, and be with us, was to go and make disciples. And I can assure you that that's what our church has been ordained to do. We have been asked, and we have we have we have prayed about what what our mission is, and it keeps coming back to this: we are to go and make disciples. So, as we bring in new believers or new members, it will be up to us to strengthen them, to teach them, to let them grow in their faith, to get stronger, to be able to be bold men and women of Christ. So I think, you know, the fact that, that this kind of ends at, the, at that point is, is kind of a destination for our church. It's marching orders. So these are marching orders for us. So, so let's, uh, let's take heart. Let's take God by the, by the hand and let him lead us to where we need to go and be what we need to be and to, to say that, that his love is the greatest love of all because, uh, for a father to give up his only son to die for me is is just saying it all. It just tells us it, it, that's the story. And the fact that he rose up and still wants me after what I did to him, I mean, how much more love can you show? Right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all the beautiful things you did for me, Lord, all the, all the great things you have done. Father, be with our church as we continue to grow, as we continue to go in the direction that you have us going, Lord. Let it be your glory that shines out of this, out of these four walls and out of the hearts of each and every one of the people in our, in our church, Father. Let it be your glory that shines because you are the reason that we are alive and saved and, and, and the joy and happiness and all the love that you give us, Father, is, is so beyond anything we can comprehend, Lord. We praise you. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. amen.